So guys, about three weeks ago, um, I have I had I had I had a student, a former student of mine, reach out to me. Um, I used to teach at the First Baptist Church of Glenard and Shabbat Christian Academy. I had a former student reach out to me, say, "Hey, Mr. Jordan, I need to talk to you." And so, seeing that he doesn't typically do that, I said, "Okay, what's wrong? What's going on? Everything all right?" He says, "Yes, everything is good with me physically, but spiritually, not so much." I said, "Okay, what's going on?" He says, during the pandemic or since the pandemic has started, I have found myself slipping in my relationship with Christ, falling in my relationship with God. I found myself falling spiritually, not knowing what to believe anymore, not knowing what to trust anymore. How do I get back? And so for how many of us is that true for today? I want to ask you, has it been hard for you to stay strong in your spiritual life lately? That answer could be yes. That answer could be no. If that answer is no for you and you have been going strong, how can you get stronger? What are some disciplines that you need to combat what's holding you back from being stronger in your walk? I want to hang out in the book of Acts today because I believe the book of Acts has that answer for us. Um, What I love about the book of Acts is it gives us a description of not only the development of the early church, but the practices of the early church. And I believe that in the midst of this pandemic, as well as going into a new year, that these practices are the disciplines that we need daily to to grow strong in our spiritual walk with God. So let's read the book of Acts, chapter 2. We're going to start at the 42nd verse. Acts, chapter 2, 42. And it reads, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the the proceeds to all as anyone had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. I want to take a second to point out this word devote, since they devoted themselves. That word devotion in Greek means to continue all the time, to daily be attentive to. So not just after the Pentecost where 3,000 men were saved and speaking in tongues. It, did, it just didn't stop there. The ex, it didn't stop at the experience, but they continued every day. They were attentive to the doctrine Every day they were attentive to fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers daily. Which is why I believe that the author here, Luke, is telling us to develop as disciples through consistent devotion. I'll say that again. The, the, the author, Luke, wants us to develop as disciples through consistent devotion. Again, like I said before, I believe that these practices, these things that we should be devoted to are just what we need in the midst of this pandemic and going into a new year to grow stronger in our spiritual lives. The first thing that we need to be devoting ourselves to is teaching. Watch what verse 42 says. It says, and they devoted themselves, again, that means continuing daily, to the apostles' teaching. The apostle teaching is just the teaching of the 12 apostles or the 12 disciples, as we know, who sat with and received direct instruction from Jesus Christ to minister to his people. But how did the believers get this teaching? I'll tell you, everywhere that the apostles were teaching is where you found the believers, whether it was in the temple or was in the city. As the, song, as the theme song of Living Single says, it says we were tight like glue. As the old saying says, they were on the apostles like white on rice. Where, where you guys go to teach, you'll find me receiving that instruction. Two things that I want you guys to know about the believers. 
they were one familiar with God for themselves. So they didn't just come to church on Sunday just to hear a good word, but they came to church on Sunday to receive a word, study and meditate on that word, and apply that word. And that same process happened day in and day out. Another thing that we need to know about these believers is that they needed a guide. They didn't lean on their own understanding. They didn't lean on their own knowledge of the scriptures. They knew that they needed a guide. Um, two summers ago, um, I, was, I was in a summer camp um, with Shabbat Christian Academy, and we went to the African American Museum. And the kids, they, they knew where they wanted to go. I want to go to the, the, sports, the sports section, the, the music section, the car section. And you have a choice in that moment, especially when walking in a museum. You can either ask for help, you know, maybe grab a map or ask for a guide, or you can spend about 30 to 45 minutes circling the food court just to find an attraction. So you have a choice. But what I decided to do was, hey, excuse me, would you happen to know where the Muhammad Ali exhibit is? And so just, so just like what I did in the museum, that's what the believers did. They recognized that, hey, I may know a little bit about my Bible. I may know a little bit of scriptures, but it's still okay to need a God. I still recognize that having a God would be essential through this walk of life. Same way that I knew, my, I knew a little bit about my history. I knew a little bit about the museum in itself for, based, based upon the map, but to its entirety, I knew it was better to have a guide. So how do you become familiar with your word? Do you attend church regularly? Do you go to a Bible study? Do you do daily devotions? It is only then that you devote yourself to the teachings where you develop as a disciple. But also, who's your guide? Who are you following? Whose instructions, whose divinely inspired instructions are you following? Is it your pastor? Is it your life group leader? I hope it's not yourself. Because again, you can know as much as you know about the Bible, but it's still somebody out there like I said, a pastor or a life group leader that can help you better along the way. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, but lean not to your own understanding. Devote yourself to teaching, folks. But also what we can devote ourselves to is each other. Watch verse 42 again. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. Pastor John K. Jenkins said that fellowship just simply means it's more than one fellow in the ship, right? Um, but its definition in Greek is the intimate sharings of oneself with another. Watch what verse 44 says. It says, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. Not some things in common, not one or two or three things in common, but all things in common, meaning they practically shared everything. If you look at verse 42, it says they devoted themselves to prayers. So not only did they share everything, but in detail, they shared each other's emotional burdens. They went to the Lord on each other's behalf, but also they shared even the financial burdens. Watch verse 45. It says, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as anyone had need. That means if Keisha was behind on rent, her community, her life group, her church body said, look, we're going to have to think of something so that Keisha can make rent. So not only did they share each other's emotional burdens through prayer and going to the throne on each other's behalf, but they shared each other's financial burdens. They had all things in common. But, but, but that, verse 45, that, that verse 45 is, is solely directed to sacrifice. It's solely connected to sacrifice. They had all things in common due to their sacrifice. What can you sacrifice? Do you know if your church members have need? And if so, what are those needs? 
I know weekly we do a, we do a food distribution where the 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 those who are affected by the pandemic maybe financially and they maybe had to make rent but are behind on groceries they pull up on us every week so that we can meet their need. So we know that the need is food. But the way that you all, that, 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 that is amongst the congregation, can meet the need is through your tithes and offerings. You may not be out in the field, but you can, you can still give from home. You can still meet the need from home through your tithing and offering, through your continual faithful giving. Or you can simply pick up the phone and check on your folks. Call somebody. Hey, how you doing? Can I get you anything? What, what do you need? You must have that intentional conversation. Not just hop on the phone and tell them, girl, everything that's going on with me, 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 me. How are you doing? How can I be praying for you? Is there anything that you need? Devote yourselves to each other. How many of us are in a life group? Where it's in the name, where we share one's life with a group. Devote yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, to each other is another way that we can develop as disciples. But remember, guys, we got to do this not just once or not just twice, not just after Sunday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, every day, continually to remain attentive all the time. But lastly, folks, we can devote ourselves to gathering. Watch verse 46. It says, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and, gener and genuine hearts, generous hearts. Praising God, is verse, 40, verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to that number day by day those who were being saved. So notice two things. That they gathered not only in the church to receive instruction and prayer, but they also gathered in their homes. So not only did they pray together, praise together, receive instruction together, but they also ate together. Having favor with all the people. That word favor means approval, acceptance. So they had favor with all the people, not just the people that they knew. Not just the people that were believers, not just the people that got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, but even the non-believers as well. Even the non-believers they had favor with. That means somebody was watching the believers as they led by example. See, when I think about it, when I think about that, I think about an infant, right? How does an infant learn? How does a toddler learn as it grows? It learns by watching. It learns by watching somebody else lead. It learns by following. And so that is the need for our spiritual infants, those who may not know the Bible as well as we do, those that are being introduced to the faith for the first time. They need to have the habits of a believer explained, but not just explained, modeled as well. So, if that infant, if that spiritual infant, there are spiritual infants filling these seats on a Sunday, logging in every Sunday online. They're in your Zoom calls. They're in your prayer calls. What, what should they be modeling or what do you think they're modeling when they walk into your church, when they walk into your building? What are they What should they walk away with? A lot of people today have a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to church. Why? Primarily because there's, there's not favor amongst all the people. There's not favor with the newcomer. There's not favor with the non-believer. They see more clubs and cliques than community and connection. Wow. Wow. Someone once said, I like your Jesus, but his people, not so much. Because they like Jesus and how we build connection and community amongst sinners and tax collectors. But his people, on the other hand, didn't follow his example. Mark 2, 17 says, and when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well have no need for a physician. But those who are sick, 
I came to call the righteous, not the righteous. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. See, the Lord was eating with tax collectors and sinners, and the Pharisees came along and said, ew, why is he eating with them? Does he not know he's the Messiah and they are, they are peasants in comparison to him? But he says again, those who are well don't got no need for me. But those who are sick, they got a need for me. I came not to call the righteous. I came not to heal the healed already. But I came to call the sinners. So we're going to model Jesus, we got to model him in the way that he connected with people, in the way that he had community with people. If we want to be an effective church, this is how. Our church mission statement says it best. For those who are members of our church, we connect with communities to cultivate strong Christians. But how can we cultivate strong Christians when we don't connect with communities? There is a baby in Christ that is logging on or, or before the pandemic sitting amongst us, but nobody wanted to talk to them because they ain't known. Nobody wanted to high five their neighbor because I ain't never seen them before. So then that baby in Christ, because it's not being spiritually nourished, becomes malnourished and eventually becomes spiritually dead. Somebody's always watching you. Devote yourselves, folks, to the teaching, to your church, for your Bible study, life groups. Devote yourself to each other. See the needs, meet the needs, hear about the needs, devote your time, sacrifice your time for a second just to hear and see the needs of your people. And then devote yourselves to gathering, not just in the church, but outside of the church. I'm looking at this context, and it's telling me it's a clear indication that church is not defined nor confined as a building. But it's, divine, but it's, but it's defined as a body, a body of believers, whether they're babies in Christ or dead in Christ. It's a body of believers. Devote yourselves to gathering. Who are your Franks? Franks means your friends, your relatives, your acquaintances, your neighbors, your co-workers. Who are you checking on on a daily day basis? Are you willing to sacrifice a piece of your social media time to make sure that needs are met? To make sure that, that their voices are heard? For somebody to know that, hey, that person cares. We, we got to get the bad taste out of people's mouths as it pertains to church. But that starts with the church. It says, if a, it says if, if, a, if a believer has fallen, it is up to you as a believer to see their way up. Not to turn your nose, not to disconnect with them, not to stop communicating with them, but see their way up. Devote yourselves, folks, to teaching. Devote yourselves to each other. And devote yourselves to gathering. And watch verse 47. This is a result of your continuing devotion to these three things. It says, and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So if God can do it in the early church, he can do it for you too. Guys, this is the, these are the practices that we implement at Ablaze Youth Ministry where we are connecting, where we are in community with each other, where we are devoted to the scriptures, devoted to each other, but also devoted to gatherings. These three principles, these, these three disciplines are important to us, folks. 
And if you are a teenager and you want to be a part, have your parent or have yourself shoot us an email at ablaze at fbcdh.org. Or if you're looking to, if you're, if you're a parent or you're an adult and you're looking to volunteer and be a part of this community as we implement these three disciplines, I encourage you to do the same. Ablaze at fbcdh.org. Because again, if God can do it to the early church, he can do it for you too. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you again for another opportunity, Lord, to learn more about you. God, I ask you right now to do a good thing. Do a new thing as we go into 2021, Lord God. Prick our hearts and let us not harden them, Lord. Keep us devoted, Lord God. Keep us consistently devoted to your teaching through your divinely inspired people, but also to each other, Lord. Lord, I know it says guard our hearts, Lord God, but send us who we, sh who, who we should trust, Lord who we should be in community with, Lord God. Give us the discernment and the wisdom to identify that. But God, let us also be devoted to gathering. Allow us to know that church just doesn't stop in the building, Lord God, but you have designed church to be a body of believers, Lord. And so God, let, let us not just hear this word, Lord God, but let us receive it, study it, meditate on it but then also apply it, Lord. And we will be so careful to give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, family, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, we would love to know it. Click subscribe, comment below, and hit us up on Facebook and Instagram at Go2Heights. That's G-O, the number two, Heights. I'd love to see you this weekend at the Heights. For info for our campuses and service times, find us online at fbcdh.org. I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.